Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2, where Art and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Thank you. Likewise. Hi, uh, Dr. Liz, I have a question for you. Um, uh, and I know it, it, it's going to sound a little bit strange coming in here, but uh, I've been noticing a lot of carrots on TV that have a the bent and because uh, that's what they use to talk about. Call call this number and solve your Peroni's disease. And uh, I never even knew there was that or an association with carrots, uh, which uh, I guess is a, a, just a clever way of doing that. But this whole field of, uh, uh, and I know they're not exactly the same, but erectile dysfunction, uh, Peroni's disease, a lot of these issues that uh, affect men have been uh, flooding the airways. Can you help us understand what this stuff is all about sure. and what, what what causes it and what people uh, who are experiencing or think they're experiencing this should do? Absolutely. Well, most of the discussion is on erectile dysfunction, right. which is very common. Uh, I found estimates between 3 million men experiencing this every year, all the way up to 30 million. So probably it's really difficult to tell because a lot of men probably don't necessarily talk about it with their doctors. But it is a very important problem. It has a huge impact on uh, medication utilization and, I, you know, there's a, a lot of things to talk about with it. It can be the result of different medications. It can also be the cause. So other medications can uh, lead to this, and, and, and it can go in both directions. Same with mental health. So if a man has other reasons and he is experiencing anxiety or depression, that can influence erectile function. And then... Erectile dysfunction can make those concerns even worse and make him yeah. feel even worse. Yeah, well, it's a pretty important function for adult men, I would, I would say. Yes, definitely. And, and they say, of course, that the brain is the largest uh, sexual organ in the body. That's so right. if you're having psychological problems or st even stress or anxiety, that's right. It can affect your performance like as we. We like the, the euphemism for good sex is performance, I think. Right, exactly. That's exactly right. And to that point, it's normal for a man to experience issues from time to time. The definition of erectile dysfunction is when it's consistent. Ah, when it's consistent okay. and it's over a stretch of a few, at least a few months, then it then we get that diagnosis. And of course, there are many medications. Um, the medications are very interesting because the way they work is they increase blood flow. Okay. And that's the mechanism of an erection is the nervous, the innervation of the glandular tissue of the penis is responding to these, what we call autonomic or involuntary nerves that cause the, these areas to dilate and allow blood in. And that's what leads to a firm and sustained erection. So that's what these medications do. Several of them were discovered by accident. They were trying to develop, for example, a blood pressure medication in the case of Viagra, and it dilates blood vessels to lower blood pressure, but then they found that it had this effect. And then of course it became the uh, medication that most people have heard of. Yeah. Uh, that, so, that now has some competitors. So, um... Obviously, if uh, a, a pill like Viagra is trying to uh, deal with uh, erectile dysfunction by changing your blood pressure, you really shouldn't be taking that without right. a doctor's checking your blood pressure, generally speaking. So if you're on a that blood pressure correct. reducer, you don't want to be start taking that little blue pill. That's correct. You got to be really careful. That's exactly yeah. right. And the other thing to look out for are the, again, we're talking about blood flow and we're talking about the, the word is microvasculature. So our blood vessels range in size all the way from the aorta, which has a really big diameter, an inch across, 
yeah. all the way down to the tiny, they get tinier and tinier in diameter, all the way to capillaries. All right. And there are illnesses that, that affect the microvasculature. The best um, known among them is diabetes. Oh, that's, that's why people develop, they lose sensation. They develop some numbness uh, in extremities, like in their feet uh, and down the legs. And that also affects, that's why they can have cardiovascular disease. So either cardiovascular disease or diabetes or both, that's going to be an uh, increased risk for developing erectile dysfunction. And that's also on the other, looking at it the other direction, uh, erectile dysfunction sometimes can be an early warning sign of problems with the microvasculature. So if a younger man is having issues with erectile function, then that's important. Get the blood sugar checked, get other hormone levels checked. So it's very important. It's a very good, um, important indicator of overall health for men. So yeah. would, you, would you say it's fair to say that uh, uh, since erectile dysfunction can be, have so many root causes from psychological, but there's, there's no physical uh, uh, issue with the, the blood flow to uh, clogged arteries, if you will, uh, that uh, if, if, it hap if it's a sustained issue, then you should absolutely go to see, seek medical uh, assistance because that's right. you may be taking something that gives you a momentary relief of something that's causing huge problems in another area. And there are ways for them to solve the problem without you taking something that could be life-threatening, like taking a yellow or blue pill when you have uh, uh, blood pressure issues due to clog uh, uh, arteries, for instance. Uh, I may not be, you know, exactly describing it correctly, but yes, so, it, so it's over exactly a period of time, have. go seek medical advice, even if you're getting released through one of these funny little pills, because you may, yes. you may actually solve the problem and making it worse. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it seems to me that, um, and I'm sure this is correct, I just don't know the time frame. But over the last 30 years or so, uh, this has become so uh, common because the drug companies are, or somebody is pushing it on television, mm. you know, <laughs> and and so people can talk about it now. And I think that's, that's right. a very good thing. That's uh, right. Remove the stigma so that men can get the help that they need. You bet. And I think an important function here is women talking about it. Uh, so yes. your partner, your wife, your spouse, it's really important that the women uh, yes. not, what do you call it, just, you know, because it's an embarrassing thing men don't want to talk That's about. Right. Mm. That's right. That's right. So yes, the tendency is to say, well, I, he's sensitive about it. We won't discuss it, right? Right. But the women need to be able to take care of their men and say, honey, we got to go see the doctor because right. not just because you can't get it up, but because this could be a symptom of something more important. That's right. And, and yeah. to our and to the women out there, or the the spouse uh, or partner of a man who's having these problems, if he refuses to get help, at least have him increase his insurance. <laughs> That's a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Anyway, any final oh, words or well. uh, have we, uh, uh, this has been enough food for thought. Absolutely, yes, indeed. I, I think that you already brought it to a very nice conclusion that uh, it is. it can be embarrassing for a man. Uh, it's important for the partner to be supportive and it's important for the man to at least bring it to the attention of a doctor. Sure. Uh, not necessarily, if it, it's not, it, if not sexually active and needing to do something about it, it's still important to discuss uh, because of what we said about it being a, a harbinger or a sign of some more important underlying problem that should get checked out. Well, there's no question it's an important subject, whether people want to talk about it or not. And I'm very glad you brought it up. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.